What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of the sit down. As always, if you enjoy this breaking news story, please be sure to hit that like button and let me know what you think of the discussion in the comment section below. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet. We're living on a rock and seeing this video for the first time. I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. Recently, over the last six hours, and broken by Capisci at Gangland News, it's been discussed that Ronnie One Arm Truccio, a former captain in the Gambino crime family, has been given compassionate release, and a federal judge plans to give him some freedom finally after more than 20 years in prison. Now, obviously, we've done shows on Ronnie One Arm. We know that Ronnie One Arm came up in Queens, he was moving around Ozone Park, very feared guy big money maker, had a lot of uh, rackets and gambling and loan sharking. And eventually down the road, his son, Alphonse Truccio, would join him in the life. He would create a path for himself. They would get jammed up. Alphonse did some time. Ronnie Onearm got indicted out of Tampa and ultimately <clears throat> received a life sentence. I went a little deeper on this story, and, and Capisci obviously put some good work into his uh, story on this, but I want to talk more about what happened here, why it happened, and what's going to happen next for Ronnie Onearm. I want to talk about some of his time in prison, um, some of the background that he had, how this happened, and just maybe shed a little bit more light on it. Now, I want to make this clear. I got this from sources very close to this situation. And this has been a long time coming. As far as I know, this is a motion that the family of Ronnie Onearm have tried to bring for a long time. Um, I've heard that his family was quite instrumental in making this happen. From what I understand, there were three or four motions put out. No, none of them got any traction. And we look at the fact that at this point, Ronnie One Arm is 73 years old. According to the source that I spoke to, they would say that Ronnie One Arm has been confined to a wheelchair. He's blind. He takes about 15 medications. And essentially, his muscles no longer work. One of the things and the reason Ronnie One Arm is called Ronnie One Arm is because he can't use one of his arms. And for years, in fact, most of his life, He's confined to a sling and he can't move his you know, body at this point. From what I understand, he's had hip replacement surgery and he cannot walk. Like he's pretty beaten up and battered at this point. And he's had to serve 20 years in prison. It's not easy with those types of conditions in some of the medical issues that he has. Now, also from what I understand, originally Ronnie one arm back in the 2000s was offered by the prosecution 12 years in this case. From what I understand, that wasn't properly conveyed. The offer expired, and they gave him life. Now, the judge would state, essentially, that that was pretty much a driving force and that there weren't any murders in this case. There was no violence in this case. It was mainly a narcotics case. And the judge said, well, look, you were going to give him 12 years. He's done over 20. His health isn't good. He's got a good support system at home. We're going to let him out. Now, I want to make this clear. Roddy One Arm is still in prison. He's at the Federal Medical Center at Rochester, Minnesota. He is confined to a hospital. That's where he is at this point. And that's not a great life, but he's 73. Any time he's going to have left will be spent with his family. Now, Capisci mentioned that Ronnie will live with one of his sons, Ronnie Jr., uh, Ronnie has a girlfriend, has a career, has a life. And Ronnie will get a slice of heaven for a couple of for a couple of years. We don't know how long he has left. It's a feared guy. A lot of people know that. I don't got to go over Ronnie's history. But I want to talk a little bit about Ronnie's prison stay because I think that was important here as well. According to what I know, Ronnie one arm got a bachelor's degree in prison. Uh, he took courses. Um, this is a guy who had very few, if any, disciplinary problems. And from what I understand, at one point, he was actually the guy they put on duty of the area of the prison where you have to watch inmates for 24 hours so they don't do certain things in themselves. 
And he was a help to people. He helped people. He made sure people didn't hurt themselves. He was a guy who took pride in that. And getting to a point in his life where he was where he was, and he had to accept that. He got a bachelor's degree, tried to better his life a little bit, learn something. I've also learned that one of the people integral in this was a person called Michael Gonzalez. Uh, he was a lawyer out of Tampa. Uh, his father was a high-profile lawyer, was actually a lawyer for uh, Trafficanti people, John Gotti at one point, um, I believe Junior at one point. Um, he was pretty integral because the lawyers in this case weren't able to practice in Florida. So they needed a Florida liaison. And Michael Gonzalez was pretty helpful in all of this, from what I understand. I also have been told by multiple sources that certain people in that family are quite resentful of the other family. No help was given to anybody here. And I think Ronnie One Arm is an old school guy. Most of the people he was around are, are gone or are quite old. It's not like the old days where they help out your family, they make sure you're good. We have also heard, and from what I understand, it is common knowledge that Alphonse Trucchio is shelved currently in the Gambino crime family. And I'd have to think that did not sit well with his father for all he did for that family. He did a 20 piece. That's what Leotardo said. I did 20 fucking years. Look, here's the thing about this life that I've learned about these people. I'm not a mobster, but I've learned a lot doing this. Alphonse is a young guy, right? He's a young gun. That was what his group was called. He's a young gun. He was out in the street. He was making money. He was kicking up. He was a respected guy, young guy, one of the youngest guys in the family. A guy who I think a lot of people thought was down the road, maybe administration type. He goes to prison, gets into a beef with Bobby Glasses. Bobby Glasses is older, and they take Bobby's side. Alphonse isn't going to step. Alphonse is a main guy. He's not going to step down to Bobby. My guess is there's a lot of resentment with this guy. And I think they probably assume we're done with that world. You know, we have our lives. We want our father to come home and, 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 and live out the last five to 10 years of his life. Happy. From what I understand, all of his family were on the zoom call. Uh, I know Capisci reported that. Um, and according to people close to this, they would tell me that um, this all really just kind of worked out. And, you know, for 20 years, he's been alone and he's did his thing. And I think the judge felt like, hey, you were going to give him 12 years. He's been good in prison. He's been fine. He's got health problems. He ain't moving anywhere. He's not. What, what, he ain't, he ain't going to be one of these people that I didn't go back to the life. I, I don't think he's even cut out to do that. He's in a pretty bad state from a uh, physical standpoint. So it's good news for the Trucchio family. Uh, I would think. Uh, this is pretty much, uh, you know, I guess dotted and crossed at this point. Uh, the judge uh, looks to be very uh, much uh, inclined to do this. So, you know, we wish Ronnie all the best uh, in the time that he has left. Wish his family all the best. I know this isn't easy. You know, sometimes they're the people that uh, have to suffer most. Um, I actually reached out to certain people that were in the streets with Ronnie at one point. Um, both of them said they were, they were happy for him and they wish him all the best. So I don't know that he'd want to hear that from them, but, uh, that's what they told me. So there you go. I just kind of gave you a little bit more. Hopefully that shed a little bit more light on it. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens next. I, I wish him all the best when we know that he's actually been released. Uh, we'll mentioned it and, uh, yeah, looks like a lot of things aided in this and Ronnie behind the wall was, uh, a model prisoner as far as i know so good for him we wish him all the best and uh yeah that's that quick uh quick show today and we'll see you here with another video over the weekend let me know in the comments what you think of ronnie's release we'll see you next time here on the sit down